Well, thanks for keeping it with CNBC TV 18. This is Smart Money. And today we're talking about women and what they should be doing with their money. Mrin Agarwal, who's a financial educator, she's done a lot of work in this space, is joining in. Uh, she's been with us uh, through the course of the last 15, 20 minutes. And she's been telling us about how a couple of things is what you can do. Perhaps just, you know, play a little safe with target maturity funds on the debt side. On the equity side, you can look at balanced advantage funds. And you can also look at just index funds. Um, all right. You also said, Mrin, before the break, that you can look at some flexi cap funds as well if someone is not interested in you know pure index funds I mean I may not want exposure to say the metal sector or say an ailing you know, real estate stock or whatever if I want to invest in new particular mutual funds um, that are focusing on a theme or a momentum uh, what are the funds that you would recommend for women right now um, actually, I typically don't recommend any thematic funds uh, or sector funds. The reason being that they tend to be too concentrated. And, you know, some of these strategies may or may not work out. Plus, what I find is that whatever are the, uh, you know, high conviction ideas and whatever are the trending or, you know, um, you know, stocks or sectors which are expected uh, to have a good growth would anyway be part of the FlexiCap fund. You know, generally what I find is that when people get into thematic funds or sector funds, what happens is that they find it really difficult to actually track these in the long term and really stay on course. So I don't really recommend them. So you recommend starting with a Nifty 50 index fund, right? So that's the first approach that you should have. And then what does one do? Um, look at look at mid cap funds. Look at flexi cap funds. I would say these are two 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 good categories that are there. Mm -hmm. Of course, if for the tax saving purposes, you can also look at ELSS funds, which are available. But I think just a combination of these couple of funds in your portfolio is good enough. Any names that you'd want to recommend on the mid cap side, on the flexi cap side? Any examples that you'd want to give on what uh, you know what are good funds to invest into? Yeah, I think, you know, specifically on index funds, because I get this question a lot saying that, um, you know, there are so many fund houses that are available today in the market and which one do I go with? So I think, you know, the first thing is not only to go with the expense ratio, because uh, a lot of times investors tend to look at index funds only based on the expense ratio. Um, I think what is really important is to look at something known as a tracking error, uh, which is basically uh, talking about uh, taking into account the expense ratio and uh, the agility of the fund manager in actually deploying the monies that are coming in, right? So it's important to look at the tracking ratio over the expense ratio because you could have a fund with lower expense ratio but a higher tracking error. Um, the tracking error can be found in the fund fact sheets very easily. Uh, so do use that to evaluate and then invest accordingly. Uh, on the FlexiCap uh, side, uh, so one the index funds, uh, two index funds which I like, I like the ICICI and Nifty 50 uh, index fund and I like the um, uh, HDFC Sensex plan. And uh, two funds that I like on the FlexiCap side, I like uh, Parag Parik um, FlexiCap fund and the Kotak FlexiCap. I like Parag Parik because of the overseas exposure. So you have this one fund that's giving you large cap, mid cap, small cap and overseas exposure as well. Mm -hmm. And hence, you don't need to look at an international fund uh, separately. And uh, okay, I have a question the there. I have a question yeah. there because Parag Parikh's fund has not done very well, right? Purely because of the exposure it has to the global uh, markets. And as we know, global technology stocks, global banking stocks have been under pressure. What do you do at a time like this? Do you keep the faith? Yes, you just keep invested. And that's the whole idea in equity investing that you need to have a seven to 10 year time frame because there are going to be short term volatilities. There is not going to be linear growth. And certainly, uh, the only thing that can help you manage volatility is the time, right? Because you cannot impact, you You know, how the markets uh, behave is not in your hands. Okay. You know, gold has traditionally been held as a security for bad times, right? However, women seem to prefer physical gold over paper gold. Uh, we were discussing this a while back. How do you change that mindset if you'd want to once again reiterate the importance of putting your money into, say, SGBs or ETFs better off than investing in physical gold? What would you tell your women viewers? Well, um, you know, every time I go to buy gold, I'm very horrified um, when I calculate and I see that 30% of the money that I'm paying is going towards charges, making charges, wasted charges and whatever else is there. And, you know, also when you're selling it, 
uh, there's a five to ten percent loss that you have. So you know you're basically looking at thirty to forty percent as money just going away when you're buying physical gold, and you're going to save all of this if you buy paper gold, right? Um, and that should be reason enough for you to uh, move away from physical gold to paper gold. And also, you know, the the whole point about the tangibility of the product doesn't really matter anymore. Mm -hmm. But what about the argument that if you're buying physical gold, right, you'd rather buy it in the form of gold coins or in the form of gold biscuits if you can afford it. That's a better way you can sort of escape making charges. Uh, yes. You don't believe in that? No, because, you know, you have storage issues and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And I think it's just this whole factor of, you know, this feel-good factor of mm. tangibility that exists. And this legacy issue, right? What our pair, fathers, forefathers, rather mothers and grandmothers have been doing. We just sort of yeah. take it forward. It's time to sort of end that legacy. Uh, so all the ladies watching us right now, you're losing a lot of money if you're buying physical gold. If you're interested in gold, rather buy paper gold. I also find that gold schemes from jewellery shops have become suddenly very popular. Um, any take on that? Oh, um, I think you should be very mindful of it. So what typically happens in these schemes is that um, you invest for a period of 11 months and then the jeweler puts in the money in the 12th month and then they allow you to buy gold from that accumulated amount. But typically you have to buy only gold jewelry and you cannot buy coins and bars. And the other thing is that if, if you have an emergency and you want to exit from that scheme, you can't, right? Mm -hmm. So the issue that I have with that scheme is that you that you are taking the risk of putting your money with one jewelry shop and one jeweler. And, you know, if, uh, you know, essentially what you're doing is that you're providing short-term working capital to the jewelry shop, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if for whatever reason, business is not good or whatever reason, you know, this person shuts the shop tomorrow, there's no recourse that you have because as far as I know that this investment is also shown as an advance purchase and not a deposit, right? Mm -hmm. So when something is shown as a deposit, then of course there's regulation, there are various guidelines, there's grievance mechanism and all of that. But when it is shown as an advance purchase, as far as I know, there's there's going to be none of that. So you're going to be at the mercy of the jeweler. So as such, I don't recommend these schemes. I know they're pretty high yielding and I know a lot of people are attracted towards it because of that. But I don't recommend it simply because of the credit risk that that exists with the product. Okay, that's a very important advice. Thanks for that, Mrin. So for short, medium and long-term goals, right? Let's get back to that. What are the products that women can consider in their portfolio? You spoke about a couple of them, but if you had to summarize for us, how, what should a woman's portfolio look like? So for the short term, which I would say would be before below three years, you can look at fixed deposits. Uh, they're easy, simple to invest. And, um, you know, of course, they're going to be fully taxable. But I think you have some great rates available as well right now. So look at fixed deposits. Of course, you can look at uh, ultra short duration debt funds as well. But if you find it difficult to figure out what this product is, just go with a fixed deposit. Uh, on the medium term side, which I would say would be between five to eight years, uh, you can look at the sovereign gold bond, of course, uh, if you prefer gold as an investment. You can, of course, look at debt funds also. Uh, you can look at, uh, for example, you could look at short duration debt funds, which I've always preferred over any other category in debt funds because I have found the risk adjusted returns on these funds to be more consistent than any of the other categories. And the third one that I spoke about, of course, was the balanced advantage funds that you can look at. Uh, the fourth one, in of course, part of the debt space is also the target maturity fund. So you've got sovereign gold bond, you've got target maturity fund, you've got short duration debt funds, and you've got the balanced advantage fund in the medium term space. Um, in the long term, which is, let's say you're looking at really, really long term periods above 15 years, of course, equity funds and equity funds can be looked at for any period above seven to eight years. But in the long term, certainly you need to have a good allocation to equity funds. Um, I talked about the categories already. Uh, another product that I really like from a retirement perspective is the National Pension Scheme. Again, in the National Pension Scheme, you have various investment options that are available. And uh, the one that I like the most is the active equity choice because it allows you to build a large retirement corpus. So certainly look at the national pension scheme as well. It's very low cost, very disciplined investing because it matures at the age of 60. So these would be net net the products that I would uh, suggest fixed deposits, mutual funds. 
um, and uh, sovereign gold and NPS. Okay, that was very, very helpful, Mrin. A uh, 360 degree perspective on what you should be doing with your portfolio. And you know what? It's not just for women, right? It's for all the men and women out there who have not taken charge of their life. Remember, financial independence is a superpower and we are here to help you achieve that. Of course, the occasion today is of Women's Day, so we're talking about women. But this is to everyone who hasn't taken charge of their finances. This is how you got to do it. Mrin, thanks a lot uh, for joining in. Appreciate your thoughts. Well, with that, it is curtains down on another special edition of Smart Money. Thanks for watching.